Hey everybody, looks into swirl here. So we're gonna do something a tiny bit different from paint pouring today. No paint involved yet anyway. Um, my dog just passed away, uh, seven years old, way too young. And I wanted to do something of an artsy piece to try and commemorate him or in memoriam him. Remind me, um, not that I ever forget. But anyway, I, I wanna do a resin art piece uh, this is a silicone cake pan I have, part of a three-size silicone pan set that I use for different things. I thought this would be a really nice size. Cat hair. Uh, so yesterday, off camera, I mixed up four ounces of KS resin, the uh, counter liquid stone resin that has a very short work time, but I didn't need much time for change because all I did was I mixed it up and I poured it in here and that gives me a nice flat, thin coating. It, it's dry now. It's I did this yesterday and it uh, set up overnight and oh my gosh, I've got so many cat hairs. Hang on a second. I need to get rid of all of them. I don't want them in there. The, the cats miss the dog, I think a little bit, maybe. They kind of like having me more more to themselves now, so I, I'm i not entirely convinced they really miss him, but I think they miss his presence because he was always around, uh, for seven years anyway, and um, I don't want their fur in here. <laughs> Even though they're my fur kids too, their fur is not going to be part of this if I can, if I can help it. Okay, so we have a flat, thin, set up, dry, touchable, uh, layer of resin in the bottom of this pan and this is going to be the side that faces up. So uh, I printed out some water slides. This is my puppy. Picture of him I took a couple years ago and I uh, used my Cricut Design Space program to slice out a five inch round. That's going to go in the middle and then I cut out some different or I I printed up some different things, some flowers I may or may not use, but the hearts and the paw prints I may, if, if they look right, uh, fit around the circle. We'll see. I have, obviously haven't done much of anything yet except do a little preliminary measuring. Um, but anyway, after I printed these out yesterday, and I did it by using the uh, water slide decal transfer paper that I've shown you before. It's for inkjet printers and it has a matte finish. Uh, and you set it up in your inject printer on uh, high quality matte photo paper and you print it out. And then what I did was I taped it at the four corners to the back of a, an old priority mail uh, cardboard mailer I have. And that kept it stiff enough and gave me a place to hold it uh, so that I could spray four coats or coats with 30 minutes wait time in between each of 2X Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Spray. You can also use matte gloss, that wouldn't have mattered because, because the next thing I sprayed on it, two layers of the Plasti Dip Glossifier that sort of plasticizes it with 30 minutes in between each and then I let this whole thing sit overnight. Um, so it's good and dry and cured and ready for us to cut out and dip in water and then put in here. Well, I'm going to use my uh, hack method again. Hack is in an easier way to do it than... When I say hack, I don't mean uh, bad or cheap. Uh, what I mean is instead of sliding the picture off the water slide backing like this, like many people do and like the instructions tell you to do, I am going to get the surface of the, uh, the layer in here wet, and then when this is ready to slide off the backing paper, I will turn around and slide the backing paper off. And this picture that we see right here will be showing when this is turned over and the bottom becomes the top. So, next thing I need to do is cut this out. Okay, so now we are going to dip it in my water. 
and let it, it should 30 to 60 seconds. I'll just keep fiddling with it until I'm convinced that it's ready to slide off. You'll know because it will start sliding around on the backing paper. Put that off to the side. Uh, the paper does tend to curl up either way you put it in. When you first put it in the water, I have watched a number of tutorials and uh, a couple people say that when it starts to flatten out on its own, that's a good signal that it's about ready. So I'm just going to keep turning it over. The initial four layers of the 2X spray gloss, or spray matte, in this case spray clear, um, was to seal the inkjet inks in, to seal the picture. And then the plastifier, or the Plasti Dip Glossifier uh, layers are to strengthen the whole water slide. It just, it makes it more like a piece of plastic, less likely to tear while I'm fussing with it to try and get it in place. And then I will use my squeegee tool, which is also a um, applicator for resin on cups and such. And I have a couple of paper towels. We'll try to get all the bubbles and all the water out of underneath the water slide once it's on there. No, not ready yet. I'll just keep letting it get wet. Uh, I also want to put some uh, some of his fur in here, which is why I don't really know where these other things are going to go. I may use, you know, a, a couple of paws, a couple of hearts around the edge, if there's room for them. Um, and then when I'm done with that, and all the water's squeegeed out from underneath everything that's a water slide, we will completely let it dry, which can be like maybe even overnight, but definitely six hours or so. So maybe later this evening, I can put another thin layer of clear resin on, and in that I will place um, some of his fur. And then that will cure overnight with his fur stuck in it so that the next layer I add, the fur won't go floating around. Uh, and the next layer will probably be the final layer in, unless there's something sticking up or some correction I have to make. And the final layer when we get to that point will be white uh, so that the water slide will show up clearly when we're looking at it through the other side, but there will be depth to the whole thing. And I will probably add Maybe not glitter, but um, sparkles, sparkly white mica to the final layer, so it will have a bit of a sparkle to it, even though there won't be full-on glitter. Okay, you see that? Yeah, part of, there it goes. All right. Actually, I could, I could just take it off the right way, but I want it to be like this. back so I can see what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be right side up. I mean, that really doesn't matter. It's a circle. But I do want it to be basically in the center. Okay. There we go. There's my baby boy. I'm going to start by sopping up all the water on the outside. Can see the bubbles. So now we squeegee. Hopefully successfully. There's a lot of surface area here. But this squeegee is really good for this. And the plastic glossifier helps me be able to put some pressure on it without hopefully tearing any of it. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. I don't see any more bubbles. Okay, so we're gonna wait. 
tell you what, we can cut these out and see if any of them are going to fit where I'd like to put them. I'm not sure they will. Well, maybe if they overlap the edge of the circle there, that won't be a huge problem. <sighs> Let's give one of the hearts a try. If not, I can use these for something else. Something tells me I'll be doing more stuff in memory of my pup. Whether I video it or not, I don't know. But I thought this would be a nice thing to show because it's a nice way for other folks who've lost a fur kid to commemorate their fur kid. Okay, now I put that in there. It's a pretty tight fit. It might work. Let's try a paw. I don't want it to get wet. I'll just take that out. Let's try a paw. And exact. Oh, that fits. Like that or like that. Okay. So maybe another paw print here and another heart there. And then the fur. Something like that. I'll keep working on this off camera and then when it's uh, time to pour the next layer of resin after everything is dried, I will bring you back and show you the pouring of the resin and me adding the fur in so it gets stuck down in the resin. So I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Here's, here's what's happening. Uh, I'm going to be putting my gear on in a few seconds <laughs> or a minute or so. Uh, so I wanted to just quickly tell you how this is going to go because once I get my gear on I won't be talking. Um, I am going to mix up probably another three ounces, um, just basically enough to cover what's here now. Uh, maybe four ounces. It depends on how this comes out. I'm going to shoot for three, but you know if I overpour, <laughs> which you know I do, I could end up with four ounces. Um, I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. You will not have to deal with that. And then when I come back, I'm going to pour it in. It's going to be clear. Uh, I will put a cover over it and then I will walk away for 10 minutes. Now this stuff that I'm using, the liquid stone, has a 15 minute working time, which means that if I give it 10 minutes, I'll give it 5 minutes to sit after I mix it, then 10 minutes to sit in here. It should be, it won't cure that fast or, or set up that fast, but it will stop being so fluid. It will start, it will start setting up. What I want is for it to be still sticky so I can press some of my pups hair into these four spots and not have it start floating around in the rest of the of the layer we just poured. So it needs to be tacky but not moving around. We will let that set up and we will come back again uh, when that's all dried and set and we will pour on our final layer. So here we go folks. I'm going to get my gear on now.
Hey buddy, we're back. Looks like the second layer dried beautifully. Uh, I, I see hairs, but that is actually supposed to be there. Uh, no bubbles, so that misting with the alcohol works really well. I'll do it again after the next layer. Uh, it looks like everything is submerged. Everything is where I put it. This is all wonderful. So basically now I'm gonna fast forward through mixing, I'll mix another four ounces. I will add in a spoonful of Crafter's Choice Super Sparkle White Diamonds Mica Powder, which is a uh, white colorant with, it looks like glitter, but it's much finer than that. It's actually just shimmery mica. It's just gorgeous stuff. Uh, and that will become the background so that when we demold this tomorrow and turn it over, the white on, that's going to be on top here will be the backdrop so that we can see everything clearly in front of it. I'm sure you know what I mean and you'll see the big reveal tomorrow. So let's just get on with mixing and pouring this final layer. Hey folks, we're back. It is the next day and it looks like it's still in there. So let's take this cover off and see how everything turned out. I'm gonna put some gloves on just so I don't get my fingerprints all over it right off the bat. Uh, so when I was, just to recap quickly, when I was mixing the white yesterday, I mixed in the mica, you saw that, and then I showed you a bottle of Cast and Craft white pigment. I, after mixing in the white mica powder, I just wanted a little more opaqueness to it, uh, which is why I added the two drops of Cast and Craft white opaque pigment, because I thought that would just help a little bit more. So here we go. see-through it's obviously it's obviously opaque white but not solid I mean you can see through it from that side too I could just add, add a sheet of paper to the back or something like that uh, I, I have ordered some uh, plate display holders like people use to display their fancy china sometimes and I think I will put him, this picture of him, next to his ashes. I could have used his ashes in here, actually mixed it in with the final sparkly layer. That would have been cool too. Maybe I'll do that in the next one. I also thought another thing I could have done before I added the last layer of white, uh, I could have, remember I would be working on the back of it, I could have um, taken my paint pens and just, I don't know, drawn some little swirls amidst the uh, fur there that would have that would have shown up as colored swirls around the picture. But then I thought, you know what, I just, I want to finish this. I want to see how it turns out. If I had done that with the uh, paint pens, I would have had to wait probably another day before 
pouring the last layer. So I figured I would finish this one, we would look at it together, and then the next one I can, the next time I can embellish the bejeebers out of it in different ways, try different things. I love how this turned out. If anyone wants to commemorate their baby, their fur kid, using resin art, this was a pretty simple way of doing it. I think it turned out really nicely. So there you have it, folks. There's my sweet little man. And his fur in all his sparkly splendor. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you for joining me today. Stay safe, I'll see you in the next video.